Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, again, uh, my name is uh, Cheshire Dev, and I'm working for uh, Hyoki Europe. And today I'm going to talk about the effect of uh, phase error in power measurement. Uh, before starting talking about it, uh, I will introduce uh, Hyoki a little bit. Hyoki is a, a brand or a company based in Japan and in the field of uh, test and measurement instrument manufacturing since 1935. And uh, Hyoki uh, manufactures uh, field measuring instruments such as multimeters, clamp meters, and so on. And, and apart from that, it also manufactures professional measuring instruments uh, related to uh, battery testing, electrical safety testing, uh, data loggers, and high-end multi, uh, high-end memory recorders, uh, and of course, uh, power meters, power analyzers, uh, current clamps, and, and uh, current sensors. Uh, so, uh, agenda of uh, today's uh, discussion is uh, where we'll introduce the effect of phase shift, what is phase shift, and why do we really have to uh, know about it today? Uh, and after that, we'll go through some, some uh, examples. Uh, what is a phase shift in the power measurement? And in the end, we will, we will see some, some, some solutions. Uh, and we'll see how we can t uh, tackle uh, with, the, with the problems that we are dealing with the phase shift. OK. Okay, so first of all, let's consider the most basic uh, 50 hertz uh, sinusoidal waveform uh, where we are measuring, let's say, a resistance and therefore there is, there is no delay in the current. Yeah? So uh, therefore, what we are seeing over here is a voltage and a current waveform. Uh, they are uh, in phase with each other. But let's say due to some X, Y, Z reason, there is, a, there is an error in the measurement, and that's why the, volt, uh, the current waveform that we are measuring is a little bit delayed. And that's why the power that we are going to measure is not going to be the same. It's going to be a little bit different, uh, and as you can see, the power that uh, we are measuring over here is P dash, which is not exactly the same as P, but it's, it's, there is not a big difference uh, in the P and P dash. But if we do the same thing uh, at one kilohertz of frequency, uh, the, same, the same amount of phase error will cause a big difference in the power that we are measuring. Uh, and if we talk about the frequencies that are higher than one kilohertz, that is, let's say, 10 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz, this, this error is even more prominent. Now, why do we really have to talk about this high frequency, high 10 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz frequency? That's because uh, the, develop, the recent developments in the, in the drivetrain industry. Uh, the idea of, uh, of the new development is to keep the size of reactor as small as possible, but again, at the same time, uh, generating the same amount of energy. And that's why the energy stored in the, uh, in the reactor is uh, always proportional to omega L, where omega is uh, 2 pi F, where F is the switching frequency. And to keep the energy level uh, same as before, if you want to reduce the size of reactors, if you want to reduce the size of inductors, uh, what you can do is you can increase the switching frequencies. And that's why the introduction of the new SICK and GUN uh, semiconductors in the, in the uh, powertrain or drivetrain, uh, which allows us to do that. And that's why uh, when we are measuring uh, the power at such a high frequency, it is really important to know that uh, we, are, uh, we are measuring it correct and what are the effects uh, that we, are, we, are, we will see in the, in the power measurement. OK, and now let's go through some examples. Uh, there is a current sensor. This is a known current sensor, uh, CT6904A. And this is uh, the response of the CT6904A uh, on the frequency spectrum. Uh, you can see at a certain point, you can see after 10 kilohertz, there is a clear delay in the, in the, uh, in the output or in the response uh, of the current sensor. 
Okay, so now we are uh, discussing only about the current sensors, but why only current sensor and why not, not, not the voltage part of the power measurement? We should discuss the voltage part as well. But in, in the industry, in the, in the real applications, the power analyzers or the power meters that are being used, they are having the voltage, direct voltage input of let's say 1000 volt or 1500 volt, which is good enough to measure the voltage directly at the moment. If you introduce the voltage sensors or let's say voltage dividers, yeah, this problem needs to be considered in the, in the voltage inputs as well. But right now, uh, we are going to uh, discuss only about the current inputs or current sensors, and uh, uh, that's why we'll focus only uh, on the current sensors. Yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, as you can see that uh, there is a clear delay uh, after a certain frequency, and this delay is, is not a negligible delay or, or not, a, not a delay that can be just ignored. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, now we will see, uh, now we are seeing some more current sensors, some known current sensors, CT6904A, 6875A, and some other, other models, X and Y. As we can see that uh, the response of model X is, is uh, quite close to zero. Okay, so this is the graph uh, where we are measuring the delay over the frequency spectrum, but this time the time delay is, is in nanoseconds, so not on degrees, but in nanoseconds. And we can see that over the complete frequency spectrum, the delay is quite, quite close to zero, but it's not constant. Yeah, uh, while uh, in case of model Y, the delay is all over the place, and it's not even close to zero, and it's not even constant. Uh, in the case of uh, the current sensors CT6904A and 6875A, uh, there is a certain delay. Yes, there is, there is obviously a delay, but the delay, we can see that it is very constant over the, over the complete frequency spectrum. Yeah, in the, in the beginning of the frequencies, uh, the delay is not so constant, but we'll talk about it uh, when we'll uh, see how to compensate this delay. Okay, so this is good, this is good, that now we know the problem, and now that we know exactly how much is the delay, and, and the next step is very easy. Next step is very easy, is that how do we compensate the delay? Okay, so what we can do is uh, we, can, we can select a very standard capacitor for which we already know the loss at a particular switching frequency, we can measure the, the loss of that standard capacitor again with a power analyzer, uh, where we are measuring the current with the help of a current sensor. And of course, this power that we are going to measure is not going to be ideal, or it's not going to be equal to the theoretical power. And that's why you can compensate this difference in the power by adjusting the time difference. Uh, and uh, ultimately, you can achieve this, uh, uh, this phase delay compensation. But this phase delay compensation that you will achieve is at a particular frequency, that is the switching frequency. So for example, uh, let's talk about the model Y, uh, where we are doing this uh, uh, time delay compensation at a particular frequency of let's say 100 kilohertz, and, and now, the, now the measurement is okay. Now we can do the measurement at, at 100 kilohertz, and now our measurement at 100, 100 kilohertz is going to be, is going to be error free. Yeah, but let's see what happens when we do the same uh, and what happens at a higher frequencies. Earlier, at, at the frequencies of let's say one megahertz, the delay was quite close to zero, which was very good, but now it's not so close to zero. So ultimately what happened is like the, the whole, whole response was shifted down and that's why uh, where and the frequencies where the response was good, it has become bad and where it was bad, it has become worse. But if we do the same thing uh, in a current sensor where the delay was constant, it's not a problem. Yeah? We can uh, compensate the delay at a, a frequency of let's say 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, or one megahertz. It doesn't matter. You are compensating at one frequency, but now you know that you are compensating the delay at all of the frequency. That means the entire frequency spectrum. And look what happened at a, high, at a lower frequency as well. The delay is now within the range of nanoseconds. 
which is okay, yeah, there is a delay for sure, but at a lower frequency where the cycling time is going to be in the range of, let's say, milliseconds, an addition of uh, 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 an error of nanoseconds is, is not going to be a, a big difference. It's not going to be good, make a big difference in the measurement of power. Uh, okay, so now we were talking about uh, the current sensors, but what happens when we uh, talk about the combination of current sensors, when we connect the current sensors uh, to a power analyzer? So this is the response of uh, uh, the latest power analyzer of Hiyoki PW8001 uh, with the CT6904 uh, over the complete frequency spectrum, and here we can say that the delay is almost zero or zero, and the response is quite stable as well. And uh, we, I chose uh, actually model X because mod, the response of model Y was very unstable uh, to get the results, and that's why we chose model X with the uh, corresponding uh, power analyzer, and the response uh, was looking like this. Uh, okay, uh, in these results, uh, I have to say that I did not compensate the uh, phase error because there was no option of doing it. And that's why these results that I'm showing is not with the phase error compensation. Uh, Hiyoki uh, is manufacturer of uh, power analyzer and current sensors, and that's why it allows us uh, to talk about, to deal with this problem ourselves. Yeah? And uh, in the latest uh, power analyzer version, that is PW8001, uh, the phase error compensation uh, happens automatically, where the data is, is saved uh, in the power and uh, in the current sensors. I'm sorry, and when it is connected to the power analyzer, the power analyzer reads the data, and there is a software uh, which allows the power analyzer to compensate the phase uh, phase error automatically. For example, again, uh, there is a, a CT that is connected. And we know that at 20 kilohertz, the phase delay is 1.89 degrees, and the power analyzer reads it directly, and it compensates it uh, automatically. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, you can ask me. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, thank you. Just caught me out there. I thought it was going to be a longer presentation. <laughs> so have, we, uh, have we any questions, please? Can I have the first question? So, yes. So why not put the calibration in the sensor? Calibration? Well, the, the, the function that you were talking about there, you, 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 when you plug that into the power analyzer, the power analyzer picks up the function uh, and, and then it, it implements it in the, in, in the measurement. Yes. Could you not put that function in the... So then you could uh, take the current transducer around. Couldn't you calibrate it out in, in the current transducer? Um, Yes and no. I mean, it's it's possible to do that, but basically the current sensor is is just a hardware which which measures the current. Yeah? yeah, and ultimately you if you want to you know like the see the output or if you want to do something with the output, you have to connect it to a, a power analyzer or let's say any other uh, reading device, let's say oscilloscope or something. It is possible, but uh, it has a well, very... I, I was thinking of an oscilloscope, you know, quite often, you know, we might use the same bit of equipment and just want to look at, at a waveform and an oscilloscope as well. Yes. But then we need to understand that it's not, it has some calibration problem, yeah? Yes, but I mean, the thing is like we are using a very special kind of terminal, which is called ME15W, okay. and the data is stored in that uh, particular uh, uh, sensor, which is transferred via this particular terminal. Uh, the use of terminal is, has nothing to do with the phase shift. It has something to do with the common mode rejection ratio, but that's why we are using the terminal, and it is not compatible with all of the uh, products that's out there. Basically, they are using BNC terminal. That's, why. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, that was my, uh, one of my questions. Uh, 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 yes. Yes, uh, that was one of the reasons. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, there are power analyzers which will have direct current inputs. And when you have direct current input, this problem will not be there. Yeah, this problem will not be there. But uh, those direct current inputs are always going to be limited to, let's say, 30 ampere or 50 ampere. 
because the higher the current that you want to measure, the bigger the shunt that you want to have, that you need to have in the power analyzer. And that makes the size of the power analyzer very big. And the form factor is, is not so, so, so appealing. And that's why the, the manufacturers always keep it very small as well. Like they, they will keep it limited. So if you want to measure the currents higher than that, you have to use the current sensors. Yeah, and we, the, the, one of the reasons why there are no direct current inputs uh, in the power analyzer in PW8001 or PW6001 as well, uh, is that we want to tackle with this problem. Yeah, if we, if we can have the direct current inputs, but then we will not be able to tackle with this problem. Uh, yeah, but, hello? Okay. Yeah, but uh, does your power analyzer only have inside uh, one current sensor? Because uh, f uh, in our laboratory, we have power analyzers with uh, more than one module, each one with a current capability of 30 amperes. So we can uh, put them in parallel and we can go with currents of up to or above 100 uh, ampere. Uh, wouldn't it be possible for your uh, power analyzer? You can choose different current sensors to measure. So it, it is possible for the power analyzer itself to add some current sensors inside, or is it limited to one? Yeah, they are, yeah, they are limited to. I mean, a range of sensors. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, one power channel uh, is limited to measure the current from one current sensor. Yeah. So you can have oh, more power channels, and mm -hmm. you can you can do that. So up to eight okay. power channels you can have in PW eight thousand one, and then mm -hmm. you can measure. Uh, different, different current with different, different current sensors. That's possible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any more questions? I, I had a question about your voltage inputs then. Yes. You've got the same problem if you use. have voltage transducers. Yes. So quite often we use voltage transducers just to ensure isolation uh, uh, from test, test equipment. So do you have the same voltage transducer capability that they have calibration curves? Yeah. It is under development, the voltage transducer. I would say there are voltage transducers that Hioki manufactures, but uh, uh, the, the one uh, which <coughs> offers a great accuracy and a good bandwidth and tackles with this problem, it's under development right now. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay then, well. Thank you for your Thank presentation. You